Alright then gang, so we saw in the last lesson that some data types contain pointers to the underlying data that's stored in another memory location. We call these pointer wrapper values and this happens automatically whenever we create one of these data types. But we can also manually create pointers for other data types like strings, ints, floats, etc. Now pointers are a data type in themselves and when we create them they're stored in their own memory block and all they do is point to another memory location. For example, I could create an int with a variable name of score and that would be stored in a single memory location. Then I could manually create a pointer variable called score pointer which pointed at the memory location of the score value. That pointer would be stored in its own memory block. But why would we want to do this? Well, to answer that, I want to dive into another example. So then we have this string right here, and I pass it into this function update name, which is up here to update the value of that string. Now we know from the last video that Go creates a copy of every variable when it's passed around as an argument like this. So updating the name inside the function like this just updates the local copy of the variable, not the original value. And we can see that when we print out the name, we can see it's still Tifa after we call this function, all right? So to combat this, we can use pointers. So remember, a pointer is just a pointer to a memory location. And the way we get a pointer to a variable is by placing an ampersand in front of it. So for example, let me come down here and print out something to the console. So fmt.println and I'm going to say memory address of name, which is the variable, is, and then I'm going to output over here, ampersand name. So what this does is get us a pointer to the memory location of the name variable, to this value right here. So this right here is a pointer to the memory location. So if I save this and run the file again down here, we're going to see the memory location that this points to. So we can see this thing right here. This is the memory location of the memory block, if you like, where this is stored. So that's a pointer, right? Now we can store pointers in a variable if we want to. So I could say, for example, create a new variable called m, and I'm going to set that equal to ampersand name. So now this variable m is storing this memory location, this pointer, in its own memory box in its own block. So this in itself has its own memory address, but it's storing the memory address of a different variable. So I've created a diagram, which I'm just going to paste in here, just in the comments to explain this. So imagine the name right here is stored at this memory address, at this block right here. We've also now got the M variable we've created, which is stored in its own memory block with its own memory address, but it's storing the pointer to this memory address where Tifa is stored. Does that make sense? So now we have this pointer stored in this variable m right here. And I could print this out and it's going to be the same as this thing right here. So let me say fmt dot print line and I'm going to output memory address and then output M, like so. And if I save this and run it down here, then hopefully we're going to see the memory address is the same. So ampersand name is now stored in M, so they're the same thing, right? So that's now being stored in its own variable. Now, if we have a pointer like this, so the memory address to some other variable, we can dereference it to get the value at the memory address it points to. And the way we do that is by placing an asterisk in front of it. So if I come down to the next line and say fmt dot print line, and then I'm going to say value at memory address colon, and then we say asterisk m. So this is a pointer. When we use an asterisk in front of a pointer, then what it does is get the value that that points to. So hopefully it's going to output Tifa. So what I'm going to do is comment out this right here. So we should now just get the memory address and then the value at that memory address. So let me save this and run the file down here. And we can see the memory address is this 
and the value of that memory address is Tifa. And then at the end, we're printing out the name, which is why we see Tifa again. All right, let me just get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. All right then, so now we have this pointer, if you like, or rather this pointer right here, and this dereference value to get the value that that pointer points to. Now what I could do is I could pass in the pointer right here into some kind of function. So we have this update name function right here, right? And what I could do is come down here and say update name. We can spell it and then pass in M, which is the pointer. Now at the minute we get an error because it's saying, well, we're accepting in a string, but you're passing in a pointer to a string. And that's what that asterisk means up here, a pointer to a string. Now, all we have to do is say, look, in this function, we're going to accept in a pointer to a string. And then over here, I'm going to dereference whatever that point is by using an asterisk. Now, when you see this asterisk in front of a type as an argument, that means that we're accepting in a pointer to whatever value is stored at that memory location. Now, when we use the asterisk right here, it means, okay, well, get that pointer, see where it's pointing to, and dereference it so I get the value in that particular block, Tifa. And now we're updating that block. So now we're no longer passing the name in. We're getting an error here, by the way, because now we're passing a string right here. Name is a string. So let's comment that out because now we're accepting a pointer. So now we're passing in a pointer to where the value is. And since we have the value from that pointer, we can update it. So what I'm going to do now is print out the name at the end. I'm going to say FNT dot print line and then the name and I'm going to print out the name before we call this as well. Let me comment out these lines. So I'm going to say FNT dot print line name right here. Then we pass in the pointer M to the update name function, which updates the original data in the original location. And then we print out the name again. So let me save this and run the file. Go run main and we see Tifa and then wedge. So it's worked. It's updated the original value now. So this is now a similar type of behavior that was happening automatically with the pointer wrapper types we talked about in the last lesson, maps and slices, whereby changing the value of the argument in the function updates the original value that was passed into it. So let me just explain again in diagram format what's happening. First of all, we create a variable called name, which is a string and it's stored in a single memory block. Then we make a pointer variable M, which points to the memory address of the original name value. We then pass this as an argument into the function. Remember, when we pass variables into a function, Go makes a copy of the variable for inside the function. So Go makes a copy of this pointer argument and puts it into its own memory block. So this is a carbon copy of the M pointer and still points to the original memory location of the name variable. Now inside the function, we use the dereference operator on the pointer to access the underlying data the pointer points to, which is the name value. Now, when we update that value, the original value is updated as well. That's the value we're updating. So hopefully now you understand how we can use pointers as arguments to access the original underlying data within functions. So next up, we're gonna talk about another data type structs.